Friends, welcome to Biju Gayu's Teaching Cafe. Today's short video lecture is on the theme, the scope of politics. So friends, one of the tiring challenges you will face as an undergraduate student of political science is to learn some basic concepts in the study of politics. They are themes like approaches to politics, methods of politics and scope of politics. So these are some of the basic concepts upon which uh, an undergraduate student of politics is introduced in the preliminary classes of political, political studies. These are primary preliminary, foundational and basic ideas, basic themes in politics. But it doesn't warrant that uh, these are simple themes. Indeed, uh, the scope of politics remained really a mirage for a student of uh, politics at the undergraduate level. Uh, even today, in this world of internet and information uh, overload, people find it's very difficult to understand what exactly the meaning of scope of politics. This is an area in the studies of politics in which a student of politics need to be properly inducted into politics, political studies. If you do not learn the basics of politics the way you should learn it, you will never get this subject in its proper meaning, in its proper understanding and you are likely to, uh, to end up in the periphery of the subject. So naturally you will quit the subject and move on to some other territories. So this lecture is a very short lecture, a modest attempt to understand the scope of uh, politics. So the most textbooks in this area will tell you that the scope of politics is very vast, very broad. It is a very an extensive area of study. It tell you that uh, it is a study uh, of state. State forms the scope. The government forms the uh, scope of politics. Or everything related to government is the scope of politics. Some other textbook in, or guidebooks in this area will tell you that the scope spreads across themes like governance, government, public administration, study of the constitution and constitutions of other countries, political philosophy, political theory, study of the problems of women, study of environment, international politics, foreign policy, various uh, policies concerning state and society. Yet other textbook and guidebooks will tell you that a, a, a long list of themes from public administration, constitution to political theory and human rights forms the content of the scope of politics. These books will list out a flood of things that fall under the theme scope of politics. But there is a confusion. Is it really the answer to the question the scope of politics? I feel that scope of politics is something very different and it is a theme related to the question how, where, when and why one should apply tools and techniques of politics to understand society. What is it? How, where, when and how one should apply the tools and techniques of politics to understand life in its complexities. That's it. The theme, scope of politics has a very large and deeper meaning. That said, I list out few of my observations that I think which falls under the theme, scope of politics. First of all, scope simply means what it covers and what it not. It covers where it goes were it not. It refers to 
how one should apply things to study society and how and one should not apply things to study society so there are areas in politics there are themes in politics there are tools and techniques in politics which you can apply to study society to reach society to reach culture to reach various walks of life and there are also uh, themes in politics that evaluates the areas of conflicts in society it there are tools in politics which tries to understand life in its complexities in our society certainly uh, the scope of politics uh, include techniques and themes to understand government administration to make a better governance understand human rights to protect human rights know your constitutional rights know your fundamental rights know your foreign policy know international affairs know the administrative system make a better social fabric secular fabric in the society but these are in alone the scope of politics scope of politics is something very vast something very different something very unique so that said understanding scope of politics is something like scaling up the mount everest why i said that it is because of the fact that politics is a universal activity so wherever you go people engage in some kind of political activities it's no doubt no exaggeration daniel defoe robinson crusoe would have engaged in some kind of political activity in mount helena island in the atlantic ocean so it is better to ask for a student of political science it is better to ask what in our social life doesn't fall under the theme scope of politics there is almost none no human activity fall outside the realm of politics hence the question is very difficult to answer also however here this is a modest attempt to identify some areas in our social life where politics has significance where politics gives you answer solutions gives you directions gives you right understanding proper understanding that is also the that also that is the scope of politics to understand issues to understand problems to understand struggles in life to understand life in its complexity for for understanding all these things politics are certain tools and techniques which you can uh, apply uh, in society thereby you can have a, a clear portrait of what exactly is your society so first point i identify the first point like this politics studies the ironies of our time this is uh, i think uh, the scope of politics will be explained to us undergraduate student in a better way what is meant by uh, uh, the ironies of our time well friends on 21 august 1911 at the famous louvre museum in paris where the famous da vinci portrait mona lisa was stolen louvre is world famous art museum and largest museum with a historic significance that is situated in paris in france the thief was none other than the famous notorious renowned italian thief vincenzo perugia the next day world media reported the news with a wide coverage given the coverage of the news next day onwards what happened is that there was an unprecedented rush towards the museum and the public in large number moved to the museum but not to see mona lisa but to see the space that is now vacant see friends till then nobody wanted to see mona lisa but when the news was out that mona lisa was stolen people rushed to the museum uh, just to see the space where mona lisa was you know put into so this is really a contradiction that you know people doesn't like 
things when they are with them people wanted to see things they want they like things they love things when things are not with them this is really an irony this issue in a better way can be explained by politics because politics are some definite tools some pure tools some social science tools some scientific tools which you can explain understand give you a clear portrait of the ironies the contradictions uh, the the dilemmas of our time of course other disciplines have their own techniques to interpret these things for example uh, literature is one of the finest subjects in the branches of knowledge which can tell you the ironies of our time in a better way for example i can tell you an example of julius caesar by shakespeare in julius caesar shakespeare narrated an interesting anecdote julius caesar was a dictator in rome he was murdered by a group of conspiring senators and caesar's friend marcus brutus was part of their conspiracy in the shakespearean play caesar was stabbed by, by one by one uh, who are all his loyal friends he resisted the attack first but until his friend brutus stabbed him from behind he was really appalled by seeing that his intimate and very close friend brutus has been part of that so he was shocked caesar was shocked realizing that in life nobody can be trusted and the famous shakespearean court et tu brut you to brutus the betrayal when people betray us people who love us people whom we love betray us we really find difficult to remain in peace and shakespeare narrated this irony in a very beautiful way this irony has been uh, beautifully narrated by some other writers in, in the ancient world for example in oedipus uh, uh, oedipus the story of oedipus this irony has been well narrated by greek writers sophocles so disappointment shock so here comes an interesting question in our social life irony is of course a political question the message of all the stories of our said are that surprise pain agonies are repeated in our life there are contradictions in our life there are ironies in our life things comes opposite to our expectations what will you do then we fight with friends we fight with people who love us we fight with uh, Uh, colleagues we have to sometimes we have to keep distance from uh, people whom we love a lot so this pain agony suffering contradictions dilemma are, uh, uh, are endless in uh, human life and we are uh, often unable to overcome the uh, the impact of these ironies look around there are a lot of examples all over the world in every society for uh, these kinds of ironies the united states which claims to be a continuous democracy a land of democracy protect of liberalism and human rights dropped atomic bomb on innocent civilians on 6 and 9th august of 1945 in the name of ideologies millions of people were killed far greater the, the number of people were killed in in the name of ideology were greater than the number of people killed in world wars so the most of the time our parliamentarians do not participate in parliamentary deliberations for which they were in fact elected to the house they create pandemonium in the house on the floor of the house so these are questions things are not working in the way we expect things to work what shall we do then we should understand why things are not working the way we expected that's why one of the finest thing you can use is the techniques of politics so politics will give you answers this is the first ex- uh, instance of the scope of politics second is politics studies conspiracies of our time i can give you a best uh, 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 an interesting example from 
Colombia. On 6 December 1928, citizens of Colombia were massacred by its own government. What was the reason? The reason was that United Fruit Company, which was an American based company which operated uh, its own offices in Colombia, which had a banana, uh, banana plant in Colombia, where workers who are Colombian citizens staged a protest. And according to the US Embassy in Colombia and according to the officials of the company, the strike was a communist strike that was meant to, sub, uh, meant to subvert the order of things there. And the United States, soon after receiving letters from the company officials and the US ambassador there, intervened in the matter and intimated the government there that it will interfere if the Colombian government is not planning to interfere in the matter and solve the issue. Soon after getting the letter, the interesting thing was that the Colombian government all of a sudden shoot the protesters. See the irony of the things, the conspiracy there, a government is killing its own citizen for a company which are located in a foreign country. The government has a loyalty to America, not to its own people, the taxpayer. Wherever you go, you can see these kinds of you know conspiracies. Government cheating, people cheating each other, friends cheating, couples cheating. This story, this story was beautifully narrated by the famed Colombian writer in his world-renowned book. 100 years of solitude, 100, 100 years of solitude, which portrayed this conspiracy uh, that tell us the unending sufferings in our life. In this novel, he portrayed how the conspiracy played by a government betrayed its own citizen for a government abroad. Our world is replete with these kinds of conspiracies. Governments conspire, citizens conspire, groups conspire, couples conspire, elites, authority conspire, neighbors conspire, friends conspire to protect their own interest, not to protect other people's interest. Everybody look inward, not out outward. So the world we need, the world needs to uncover these kinds of conspiracies and explain why these conspiracies exist in our society. So politics as a discipline with its own tools and techniques can better understand these issues. It can give you a right answer, give you a proper example, give you a proper understanding of the conspiracies and why sufferings happen because of conspiracies. This is the second point. And third point is that politics studies violence. There is violence in our society but we don't know how it occurs. We only know physical violence, but there are different kinds of violence. On 7th January 2015, for example, at about 11.30 local time, two people rushed into the famous newspaper office of the newspaper called Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Armed with assault rifles and other weapons, the assailants entered into the office of Charlie Hebdo and started to shoot. It, they killed 12 people and injured 11, people, 11 others. The gunmen themselves identified as belonging to the Islamist terrorist group Al-Qaeda which has a branch in Yemen and the organizers took the responsibility for the attack. According to the, organized, uh, according to the assailants, the group attacked them because the cartoon portrayed Prophet Islam in a poor light. So it was blasphemy according to religious belief systems. So murder is the punishment. So violence occurs in society in ways we never expect it occur. So intellectual violence is an example. There are a lot of intellectual violence. On Facebook you go, you go to Facebook and post so many things which hurt so many people but we never realize that we will never do such kinds of violence in face-to-face -face contact. So these kinds of violence exist in our society, we people knowing nothing of it. So ideological violence, intellectual violence, cultural violence are violence far severe than physical violence. 
So violence exists in our society. And the best way to understand these kinds of violence in our society is the tools of political science. And another point I would like to introduce in the theme, the scope of politics is that politics studies the biography and the alchemy of political life in a nation. We know that India became independent in 1947. As a student of political science, we should know the minute details of how India has been born, how it has been grown up, how, where it is going towards as of now. 1947, India became independent. 1952, it got first uh, general election. Nehru became the prime minister. 1960, China attacked India. Nehru was betrayed. 64, Nehru died. 64 to 66, Lal Bahadur Shastri became the prime minister. Indira became the prime minister in 1966. Indira era prolonged up to 1978. Moraji Desai became prime minister in 1978. Mandal Commission was appointed by Moraji Desai. Rajiv Gandhi has come to power in 1989. He was assassinated later in 1991. In between Chandrasekhar and V.P. Singh came to power. Rao came in to power in 1991, Vajupayee in 1996, H.D. Devagavada and I.K. Gujarat as Prime Ministers in 1996. 1999 Vajupayee again came, then come Manmohan Singh, then come Narendra Modi. So, these are events, political events, but this represents the biography, the biography of a nation through its elected leaders and the parties they represent. A student of political science should understand every minute detail, every inch detail of how the nation lives, how the political process takes place, how parliamentarians debates, how discussions takes place in society, what media report. Any student of politics will have minute details of the process of politics. The study of politics is interesting because it gives you so many information about the biography, the political biography of the nation you live in. Another point, the scope of politics is that it produces intellectuals. It's one of the finest disciplines that produce a lot of intellectuals. 2007, a special issue by Foreign Policy Magazine. It featured 100 intellectuals in the world. Noam Chomsky topped the list. But it had listed 17 political scientists that was the highest from a single discipline, largest from a single discipline in the survey carried. The point is that political science as an academic branch of knowledge produces a lot of intellectuals, thinkers, thought leaders, social critics, writers, commentators, think tanks. They give you explanations to social events, political events. They give you directions, they give you policy documents, they give you insights into issues. That's what expected of political science as a, an academic discipline. As a student of political science, you should have insight. Your insight is not like the insight of an ordinary citizen. Your insight is highly technical, scientific, fact-oriented and that is far advanced and highly sophisticated. Political science gives you that skill. And last point I would like to in introduce as a scope of politics is that politics organize research. According to Thomson Reuters, political science is one of the disciplines that produce largest number of impact factor high quality research journals in the world. It studies anything from rocket science to pushpin, anything falls under the scope of politics. Family, nation, technology, culture, environment. Almost everything falls into the research subjects of political science. There is no area which is left untouched by political science. It can study everything under the sky. Even before you are born, even before you are born, politics interfere in you. Your right to birth. Even after you die, politics will interfere in you. So, from your uh, fetal stage to your uh, coffin stage, there is politics. Somehow it interferes in you. So that is the scope of politics. Everything under the sky falls under uh, politics. Even people go to space and Mars. That is also a political resolution. That said, politics as an academic discipline has a lot of themes 
that forms the scope of the subject but the problem with uh, the scope of politics is that most undergraduate students never really understand what is the scope of politics because this is a subject this is a theme people often uh, take it for granted that they consider that is a very simple thing but if you are not properly introduced into this theme you know you will never get the subject there is a problem with this uh, this area methods approaches meaning definitions scope so this was a modest attempt to introduce you the scope of politics in a in a short video lecture so i hope you uh, i was able to create some kinds of spark in your mind if you have any questions any doubts any commentaries any criticism drop me a line in the comment box below in my youtube channel thank you thank you for watching thank you